You know, a Sonic video being released on a primarily Pokemon channel after not even posting a video for five months did not do the last video any favors. And then a quick Pokemon video did surprisingly decent. So let's do another Sonic video. What's the worst that could happen? In case you couldn't tell from my Sonic Origins review, I've really been enjoying playing this collection of games just for their ease of playing them on a current console. Being able to just turn on my PS4 and play these games in widescreen, HD, with the PS4 controller, one of my favorites, it's just a good time. And I'm gonna be honest with you here, I've never really cared for Sonic 1 until this collection. I played it on the Genesis, and every single Mega Collection along the way. And the Game Boy Advance port, which is really bad. I don't think you can understand how truly bad that port is unless you've actually played it. Look up some videos on it. The reason I never liked Sonic 1 that much growing up was that I was really bad at it. I could zoom through Green Hill Zone and then once every blue moon make it through Marble Zone. I really just wasn't patient and couldn't juggle the patience and platforming required for Marvel Zone. But playing it on PS4 has made me appreciate the game in a new light. I always felt like I appreciated the game, but just didn't care for it. But that's not how it is now. And so that brings us to today's video. I want to rank all six of the levels in Sonic 1 from my least favorite to most favorite. I'm drawing heavy inspiration from Shafrilis' Mario Kart Tracks video. Highly recommend these videos. Really good stuff. I'm hoping this will allow me to have a series that you can expect to follow this one. Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Knuckles levels, etc. One quick thing to add, I'm going to try my best not to factor in music or boss battles to each level's ranking. Sonic opinions are incredibly divisive, but this one, we can almost all agree on, music is always top tier. I'm talking straight S's across the board. And the bosses in Sonic 1 aren't really anything special, except for one of them. And even then, it's nothing crazy. And the final zone is just the final boss battle. So there's nothing special there. Speaking of S tier, let's talk about how this is going to be ranked. I thought about ranking them as a tier list, but there's only six levels. So there would only be one or two levels in each tier. And honestly, I don't really think any of these levels would reach my personal S tier rank. Maybe even the A tier. Truthfully, most of these would be in D and C. They're not necessarily bad, but it's the first Sonic game. The lesser levels have a lot weighing them down in terms of my enjoyment. And because it's the first Sonic game, I feel like they had trouble getting what Sonic is really supposed to be. But my least favorite stage in Sonic 1 probably is my least favorite of all time. Let's get rolling with Labyrinth Zone. It's a water level. What else needs to be said? There's not a lot of places in this level that you're able to take advantage of going fast anyways, which isn't a big deal, but when you're forced to move even slower through the water, it just makes the game boring. If I was able to explore underwater, I might be able to enjoy things a little more, but I can't, cause I'll drown. Speaking of drowning, please don't think I'm saying that Sonic should be able to be underwater indefinitely. Having to manage air bubbles while traversing through the water here is just really hard. But if you take even the slightest detour, it's going to be tough for you to gather your bearings and get back on track while trying to find some air bubbles. There's a large number of traps and enemies all throughout the level too that should be easier to avoid because you're having to take your time with platforming. But because your speed is handicapped by the water, it's still hard to avoid said traps. The spinning spike balls are just particularly annoying. I'm not a child and I know how to avoid them. I'm just impatient like a child and I want to zoom through the level quickly. And this stupid spike ball protecting this invincibility box gets me every time. I should absolutely know it's coming, but I always fall for it. Speaking of falling, the boss battle is hardly a boss. You just have to reach the top of the cavern you're in. And if you get hit by one of the traps in just the right way, you'll plummet all the way to the bottom of the cavern. I just don't like anything about this level except for the music. If the music wasn't as good as it was, this level would have no redeeming qualities at all. But that track is some good stuff. Here's my big problem with the zone. I'm not a fan of stages that allow you to move fast, but there's so many traps being thrown at you that there's no point in going fast. The last zone in the game shouldn't be an easy zone, but there's so many traps all in a row that actively punish you for going fast. 
These little pig turds are annoying. The exploding balls stick around for way too long. You spend more time just waiting for them to explode than actually dealing with the pigs themselves. And some of these trapdoors and spinning platforms move way too fast. It almost feels like you have to be perfect with no room for error. At least there's not a ton of bottomless pits in this level, so if you miss your jump timing, you're not just completely screwed. But there are positives to talk about with this level compared to Labyrinth Zone. The rotating circle platforms that let you gain speed and get a good jump off of are fun to play around with. And what may seem like a complete contradiction to Labyrinth Zone, I love the third act of Scrap Brain where you essentially go back to Labyrinth Zone. But really only because of the shortcut path that drastically shortens the level. But this is because it really feels like a true test of skill that rewards you properly with a quick jump to the final boss. I don't think Scrap Brain is a bad zone, I'm just not an overall fan of it. This is really the first level in the game that I don't have any negatives about, but I don't have an overwhelming amount of positives about it either. The few positives are downright charming. The whole aesthetic of this zone is cozy. Starlight just really describes this level in a nutshell. There's a fair amount of platforming that allows you to actually run fast through the stage without throwing cheap blockades in your path. It's slightly annoying that you can't destroy these bombs on your own, instead having to wait for them to blow up on their own. Most of them you can just jump over, but there's a few that you have to patiently wait for, which isn't a huge deal, but just come on, let's go. The seesaws with spike balls are probably my favorite mechanic in this game that's not just Sonic being fast in his own. And I know I said I wouldn't factor in boss battles into each zone with the rankings, but the seesaws in the boss battle are just so satisfying to use. Whether you use the spike balls to hit Robotnik, or you catapult into the sky and knock into him yourself. Very satisfying. I mentioned the starry backdrop earlier and how it's so good, and I like how you can see the lights of buildings far off in the distance. But when you're looking at the buildings close by, I think it just looks ugly. Totally contrasts with the cozy star feel. The positives are a little good and the negatives are a little bad. Just about as basic as you can get. This is technically in the lower half levels on this list, but I think it's positives outweigh the negatives by just a smidge. As a kid, this was my least favorite stage of all time, and I know it was a lot of people's least favorite. It may still be. But I have really come to appreciate this zone. The biggest complaint is that you go from Green Hill Zone to a zone where you move slowly. But here's where I'll defend it. This level isn't designed for you to go fast. It's designed for you to figure out how to manage speed in tight platforming sections. The beginning of Act 1 lets you zoom through to the underground, and then learn about pushing blocks, dealing with the speed machine in close quarters. You're going to spend a lot of time hot-footing into the lava if you just try to force your way through it. But here's something I've learned after playing the stage a lot more. There are sections where you absolutely can zoom through it. With enough practice, you can make super precise jumps in this little underground area where there's almost no consequences. Or this section near the end of Act 3 where one wrong jump plummets you to the bottom of the stage, having to climb back up again. And when you get these down, you feel so satisfied. It's not perfect though. The parts where caterpillars are all just in a line and there's a spring that sends you backwards after you jump over both caterpillars, pretty lame. And these spike drops are just garbage. There's nothing interesting about them. I dislike them a lot. Okay, I know the music isn't supposed to be a factor in this, but this is the best music for a zone by far. This track slaps. I view this zone as the prototype for Casino Night in Sonic 2. A bunch of bumpers and springs everywhere, a battle with physics the whole way through. Plenty of areas to just mindlessly zoom, but areas where you have to be somewhat cautious. These big spike balls are honestly no problem for me. You know why? Because they're massive. You're gonna see them. There's a chance they catch you off guard the first time through, but then they're pretty noticeable. Even the little spike ball bars that spin around aren't too hard to avoid. The bright but muted colors of the zone are a huge draw for me. It feels like what I think the inside of a jukebox is supposed to be like. Does that even make sense? Who cares? The whole vibe is stellar for this zone. The only two things that I don't care about are these big blocks that move up and down. They're just slow, I don't like them, they remind me of those spike drops from Marble Zone, 
and the Buzz Bombers are a little obnoxious in this big block zone. But seriously, the only problems I have with that zone. But come on, it's Sonic 1. Green Hill Zone is by far the best stage in Sonic 1. There's a reason it's been brought back in so many great games. And the other games it's been in. But this is where it all started. The aesthetic for the whole zone just fits Sonic. He contrasts incredibly well with the greens and browns of the stage. The rolling green hills, no pun intended, allow you to seriously blast your way through the level, speeding as fast as you can, while still being able to platform along the way. And the enemies are the right level of challenge, especially for a first level. As long as you're not just stupid, you'll understand how to take them down. The Piranha Bots jumping over the bridge just brings so much nostalgia to me. The first Moto Bug you see is simultaneously menacing and laughable. And bouncing off Buzz Bombers at high speeds where you can just bounce through the whole level? Life changing. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's just plain fun. I truly have no complaints about Green Hill Zone. I'd maybe only rank it as high as an A on a tier list of every Sonic level, but it would be very high on that list. And there you have it. Not sure how soon a ranking of the Sonic 2 levels would happen. It honestly depends on how well received this video is. In the time that I started the script, I actually did release a Pokemon-centric video on the channel, and like I said at the beginning, it reminded me of why I shifted my focus to primarily Pokemon a few years back. Anyways, let me know how much you hate my rankings of the stages in the comments below. Leave a like showing me that you think my list is garbage, and until next time, see you later!